Well, I, I okay. should say that while we're waiting for that live stream, uh, I just want to let all of you know that you're on live television right now as well. So why don't you go ahead and, and wave right. for the TV cameras anyway while we're... While we're <laughs> <laughs> So what do we, what do we okay, know about so, the live stream? Colleagues, thank you okay. very much. Tim McCosker, Councilman of the 1-5. I'm here with some scholar athletes from the 1-5, the Jordan High Bull, Football Bulldogs. Let's hear it for Jordan High. <laughs> Jordan High, in the, for this football season, uh, went to the playoffs and won the Division III CIF Championship. Yeah. And we beat... Washington prep, and it was a nail biter. It was a tough, tough game. As my Bulldogs, I love these guys, but they would go down in the first half quite often, right, Coach? Yeah. They would go down in the first half every once in a while. We were down in the first half. They came back in the second half to beat Washington prep and win the CIF championship. And I was really pleased to be there that day for that beautiful game at Birmingham, although I want to move the, I'm going to talk to the CIF about moving games down south a little bit. I also was really, really privileged to be at that game with a fellow, with a, a, a Jordan High Bulldog grad, council member Hugo Soto Martinez, who was at that game. <laughs> and we had a lot of fun. Um, the, in all seriousness, the importance of uh, interscholastic and youth sports is incredible. These, these are scholars and athletes who, outside of their important classroom activities, you know, took on the challenge of a, of a long and grueling football season. They had great success, some of the greatest success that the school has had in 40 years, more than 40 years, um, and went into the playoffs and hung together, hung together tough to make sure that they could win this championship. Uh, we know that uh, coaching is so critical. Parenting and the family support and the coaching is so critical. I want to call out especially Coach Derek Benton, Coach Benton right here. Yeah. In 2019 and 2020, the record was seven and five, which is great. Uh, and they were um, Marine, they were Metro League champs and they made the quarterfinals. And then in 2021, they lost the whole season due to COVID. Uh, Coach Benton brought the team back even stronger with a record of eight and four, one more than the prior season and another appearance in the CIF playoff quarterfinals, showing determination and promise and commitment, commitment to our community of Watts and commitment to this great school. And by the way, Jordan has an unbelievable history in the city of Los Angeles. Jordan just celebrated 100 years, 100 years in existence. It dates back to a time before Watts was even part of the city of Los Angeles. And so, so many family stories in Watts come through Jordan. It is such a great school and it's so great that Coach Benton stuck with this team and told this team to believe and caused this team to believe and then in this past season put together an astounding 11-4 and record. They were the CIF Metro League champions, the CIF LA Division III champions, and the CIF Southern Regional runner-up. And I will say with great pride and really a lot of excitement, Today, we, I can tell you that we have the coach, the Division Three CIF Coach of the Year, Derek Benton, yeah. Coach of the Year. Yeah. And I also want to recognize Metro League Player of the Year, David Sandy. David? Yeah. David is a junior. He's a junior. He's a running back and a safety. He rushed for 2,800 yards and 39 touchdowns this season. 2,800 yards. 1,000 yards in a season is like what people aim for. Yep. He had 2,800 yards and 39, 39 TDs. Incredible season. He also became the CIF player, Division III Player of the Year. So congratulations to David. This team has had, has had an incredible season. These are really, really... You know, brothers on the field, they have a great coaching, they have a great administration, lucky, uh, the 1-5, we are really lucky to have them in the 1-5, and I want to introduce, and he's going to squeeze through his players here, I want to introduce uh, Coach Derek Benton, the athletic director, and I want to call out Jamie Krukenberg, the uh, Jordan High 
um, athletic director. So come on up and give us a couple of words. <laughs> yeah. Jamie? Yes. Thank you, thank you. Um, really, I just want to say thank you for recognizing our student athletes and the coaching staff that has supported them all year long. We have some parents here, uh, always at every game. So just really thank you for recognizing this historical team. And continuing with Ms. Kay's comments, um, I want you guys to know what's really remarkable about these young men. They were scholar athletes in the classroom. We had a team GPA of 3.0 and higher. So they didn't just do it on the field, they did it in the classrooms. And that's one of the greatest joys of mine because they're being prepared to go into society and be productive members like you all out there. At this time, I'm going to defer to my captains, David Sandy, Daniel Ibarra, uh, Demarion Brown, and last but not least, where is he at? Karan Hendricks. Let's go. And keep it to a, min uh, a minute and short. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> thank you for having me here, Council. Thank you, thank you. I love the, um, the building here. It's beautiful. Um, being able to win as a, with this team, it was such a, like, I had, it was a privilege, a great privilege that I was very lucky to have. This team is more than like a family to me. They're like brothers I never got to have. I love them all deeply. And um, it was a great year we had together. I'd love to do it all over again next year, a repeat. All right. I just want to thank y'all for having us here. Uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity. I never thought we were going to make it here, honestly. But, um, you know, we fought hard, fought through adversity and all that. And uh, <laughs> I made a family, a new family that I never thought I would have. I love every last one of y'all. I'm proud of every last one of y'all. And we're going to repeat next year. Ah. Um, grateful for being here, grateful for this team, my players, it's my family. Um, I love everybody on the team. It's a great season. We just waiting on our rings and we go just turn up. Good luck next year. Uh, hello, my name is Daniel Barra, and I'm one of the grateful captains that Coach Derek Benson has provided for us, and it's very, I'm very blessed and very thankful for the council to invite the Jordan Bulldogs down here and just present us with this amazing just experience for us. And also, I just wanted to thank the team, thank the city of Watts for not only being at our games, but just supporting us no matter what happens. We have, we have faced a lot of adversity. But you know, uh, my favorite saying is pressure makes diamonds, and that's what, that's what we came out to be. We came out to be diamonds and become great. So thank y'all very much for inviting us over here, and just very blessed for all this experience, you know? Thank y'all. So these guys follow some pretty impressive football players in the history of Jordan High. I want to call out Michael Douglas, all-pro linebacker for the Green Bay Packers and the San Diego Chargers. He was a Bulldog. Fletcher Joseph Perry, NFL Hall of Famer, was a Bulldog. And James Washington, who was with us at the 100-year anniversary, he's a two-time Super Bowl champion, NFL safety, played for the Rams, for the Cowboys, and the Washington Redskins. But I would be remiss if I didn't call out another great footballer for Jordan High, my very own staff member, Kamon Day is here. Kamon. <laughs> Kamon's a, a team member in the, on Team 1-5 and, and was also with me at so those, uh, those Jordan games. So we have a really proud, a proud history uh, at Jordan High. But I will say, the last time they won a CIF championship in football was 1980. So it had been a few years. And so 43 years later, these guys are bringing back a trophy case and getting their rings. And so I want to congratulate them once again and wish them well for next year. You heard it here. You guys got to repeat, right? Yeah. Let's hear it for the Bulldogs. Thank you, Mr. McOsker. And before you okay. proceed, 
it comes as no surprise that there are members who would like uh, to comment on the Jordan Bulldogs. So I'd like to first call on Council Member Hutt. Thank you, Mr. President. I just uh, want to say congratulations. We are so very proud of you. Uh, I used to work in the, in the Assembly and the Senate that was a part of uh, the Watts area. We're, we're just, I'm, I'm just deeply proud of this win for you. And I know the future looks bright for those that are going to be seniors. I know you're doing great things and those that are going to play again. We're going to look forward to really celebrating you again. Congratulations. And of course, Jordan High alum, who still looks good in his letter jacket, <laughs> Council Member Soto Martinez. Thank you so much, Council President. First of all, thank you so much, uh, Council Member McCosker, for bringing these uh, wonderful group of folks uh, here today. Uh, you and I saw the game together. It was very exciting uh, to, to watch them come back and win. But I, I just want to say that I am incredibly proud of, of everyone here today. Uh, you know, when, when I played football at Jordan High School, we had the last 1980 championship and we always wanted to win and represent our community well, but we never could do it. And I, over the years, I've followed the team. And so I started seeing um, the LA Times are winning, they're winning. I said, oh my God, they're, they're, we can actually make it again, like after 1980. So after over 40 years, you, you have done it. You have shown uh, the city that even if you live next to the Jordan Downs, if you live next to the train tracks or an industrial yard, this community matters. It's important, your excellence, and also in your academic excellence, I think should be also applauded. So despite all those odds of, of, of you know, where we grew up, y'all are champions. You have made me proud, you've made the city proud. So I hope you, you take this, uh, wear it proudly, and may that help you in, in all your future endeavors as you grow into young adults and, and become superstars wherever that may be, whether it's playing sports or entering the workforce. Again, again just incredibly proud of, of everything you have done. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And let me just say that anybody who's ever played a high school sport uh, remembers those moments for the rest of their lives. And you especially remember your coaches. And uh, so, Coach Benton, let me just say uh, what a remarkable job that you've done in not only producing a championship team, but in helping to develop such extraordinary young men who came here and just that not only have had such athletic and academic success, but came here and spoke so beautifully about their gratitude and their, uh, you know, th those values like that that uh, have been instilled in them. So uh, I, I just, I can't say enough good things to congratulate all of you on an extraordinary year and wish you all the best uh, of success for next year as well. Council Member McCoskey. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask uh, my colleague, came on. No, you come here to the microphone. I want you to present to Coach Derek and to our athletic director. But before I do, I also want to call out a couple of the moms who are here today and, and very proudly observing their kids, representing all of those moms and aunts and uncles and grandparents and siblings that are so proud of these kids. So you're always welcome here. Thank you. Uh, from us to you guys, Jordan says Jordan High School 2023 through 24 football team. On behalf of the Los Angeles and the 1-5, it is, it is our honor to congratulate you on your championship success, your remarkable efforts, and an ins inspiration to the students athletes throughout the 1-5 communities, wishing you to continue succeed, success, and thank you for co your contributions and legacy of championships. Congratulations to the 2023 through 24 Jordan High School football team. It's an honor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll go in the back of your Great way to start our day. All right. Um, next, we're ready to go to the public comment portion of our meeting. So, Mr. Clerk, Madam City Attorney, if you could please read in the instructions for our uh, telephonic comment. As indicated on the agenda, members of the public wishing to offer public comment should call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and then press pound. 
then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. When it is your turn to speak, an automated Zoom voice will ask you to press star six to unmute. Let me repeat, call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 1605358466 and then press pound. Then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. When it is your turn to speak, an automated Zoom voice will ask you to press star six to unmute. Okay. To people providing public comment, when it is your turn to speak, either at the podium or on the phone, please state which of the agenda items you'd like to speak to. You will have one minute per item, up to three minutes total, for the items open for public comment. We will tell you when your time is up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you are not on topic, or if we cannot tell whether you're on topic, you will get one brief warning from me or the president. At that point, you will need to get immediately on topic. If you do not do so, or you again stray off topic, you'll forfeit the rest of your speaking time, and we will move on to the next speaker. The items open for public comment are items number one, four through nine, 25 and number nine from Tuesday's agenda. Members of the public may also speak for up to one minute for general public comment, which will be held at the end of the meeting. During general public comment, members of the public may speak to any of the items or anything else in the city's subject matter jurisdiction. For members of the public calling in, when it is your turn to speak, an automated message from Zoom will prompt you to press star six to unmute yourself. If you do not do so, council staff will prompt you once more. At that point, you need to immediately unmute yourself or you'll unfortunately forfeit your time and we will move on to the next speaker. Finally, because of a brief time delay between the live meeting and the broadcast, two things are important. First, while you're waiting for your turn to speak, keep one ear to the phone so you hear in real time when it's your turn to press star six. Second, if you're listening to the meeting on other devices, please turn down the volume on those devices immediately when it's your turn to speak. Between the time delay and feedback, it will cause a great deal of confusion if you continue to listen on other devices. Okay, so I'm gonna call some names. Uh, and you can line up on the side after I call your names. Candido, Arnold Sachs, Andre Quintero, Brandon Smith, uh, Arnold Sachs again, uh, and then Andrew Graber, Gravener. But you can only sign up once. Go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Um, which items would you like to speak to? Uh, this is general public comment. Oh, we'll be taking general public comment at the end of the meeting. Okay. Um, I just want to clarify the items that are available for public comment are items 1, 4 through 9, and 25. And I misspoke earlier. It's item 9 from Wednesday's agenda. Oh, you know you need a two-thirds vote to change the rules. Speaker, which items would you like to speak to? Uh, let's see. We have um, item four, item, let's see, I have two more, eight, nine, okay. You'll have three minutes. Item four is putting another Hollywood Walk of Fame star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame because we know that's what's important right now, right? Um, <clears throat> I mean, you know, six unhoused people dying on the streets every day. There's, you know, just rampant, you know, all kinds of corruption going on in this city. And we're just putting Hollywood Walk of Fame stars on there. I mean, again, no, no offense to the people being honored. They're, they're being thrown in the middle of all of this. But, you know, why don't you resolve your issues? And then we can give some Hollywood Walk of Fame stars. We can honor them, have a big celebration, a big party, and, you know... Well, and ho it'll probably be a completely different council, so we're gonna have to get rid of all you to fix all the issues. But um, but yeah um, let's see. So when all the issues are fixed, you're all about to be elected out. Let's see. We have item eight 
is um, a motion from Kevin DeLeon and Officer Tracy um, for um, lighting up City Hall for his Kevin's campaign event. Um, you're all going to vote for because you all want Kevin reelected. Um, so, you know, because you all, you all love him. You're all racist or you're corrupt or you're hiding something else or you're cowards. Um, you all just are going to vote for his motions. You're going to vote to let him write up City Hall and post it on. But, you know, you're not doing anything about cancer or anything. I mean, you know, yeah. Let's see, we have a motion from Nithya Raman and um, King Krikorian to His Majesty to um, declare January 22, the next week, I think, as Homeless Count Week. Um, you're going to count them. Um, well, I mean, I guess it's okay that we're counting them, I guess, but I mean, you know, why aren't we housing them? Why aren't we giving services to them? I mean, you know, what are you, I mean, we kind of know how many people are unhoused at this point. I mean, it's pretty obvious, known and well clear, um, but, you know, why don't you count, why don't you, you just count them or, or something? Why don't you get them housed? Why are we doing all this resources towards counting them again? Why don't we get them housed? Why don't we get them services? And so just counting them off before you, um, send them on a bus and take them out to the camp in the desert like a lot of you want to do. Um, you know, why don't you just, you know, why don't we get them housing in the city? Why don't we get them services in the city? But no, we'll just count them again. So we, so we know how many there are, um, you know, how, so we can calculate the percentages when you consider six unhoused people dying every day on the streets. Uh, Ms. Lewis, you are not allowed to speak out. Any other, sp if you speak out, you will be removed. You, you've been warned many times. You don't need another warning. Okay, Mr. Sachs, go ahead. Which items would you like to speak to? Um, public comment, item number one, item number four, item number eight, item number nine, and the uh, item 25, is that okay. going to be held later on or? No, you can speak to that item now, but we'll take your general public comment at the end of the meeting. So you have three minutes right now. Okay. Item number one refers to the Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act of 1982, which means after 1982, there was no more tax responsibility, tax equity and, and fiscal responsibility. It was done away with completely. That's the whole idea here. You do this, you enact, the state legislature enacts this stuff, and all of a sudden there's no more responsibility. That's when Prop A and Prop C were, were initiated for Metro, Measure R and Measure M. All those tax dollars were stolen because Measure R stands for Mark Ridley Thomas, and the Measure M is not an M. So if you look at the, if you went outside and you looked at the, uh, at the paperwork that Metro gives out, you'll see that the M is not a complete M which means since it's not a complete letter, you can't use pictures for, for words. And it's actually a picture of a pair of pants. So we steal that money too. That's why it's taken over 60 years to do any kind of work for Metro. Um, item, item number four refers to Garrett Morris getting a star on the, on the uh, Hollywood Walk of Fame. And I'm wondering, all these people that came up here from this high school that was located in Watts, where Rosa Parks uh, Station is located. I'm wondering why nobody showed up in, in this city council because it was the only government building that had the KKK, an African-American dressed up as a KKK grand wizard and not one motherfucker came in here and said, what the hell is going on? Not one member of city council said anything, nothing. You have a KKK, African-American dressed up as a stick, KKK. Stick to the items, please. Oh, uh, sorry? The items. Uh, this is item number nine, Garrett Morris, who's an African-American, I imagine. So I'm wondering why they didn't show up and I ask about why we have an African-American dressed up as a KKK Grand Wizard. Why nobody showed up to say anything about it. It's in the, it's in the aim. Speaker, and, you should move on to your other items. And Rosa Parks, 
was all about equality. What would she say if she had to deal with a KKK that came back after 50 years? Item number eight refers to wearing red. City council members should wear more denim because there's more women being abused every goddamn day in this city. It's a drug capital of America. Item number nine refers to the count for the homelessness. What about path workers? What about metro path workers? Metropolitan Transportation Authority path workers? What about county path workers? There's 90,000 homeless people living in the city of Los Angeles. There's more people pushing around grocery carts. There's more people dumpster diving for food. Public comment? Okay, thank you. General public comments at the end of the meeting. Mr. Sachs, your time has expired. The public comments is being held at the end of the meeting. I'll call some more names. Uh, Mr. Herman, Greenspan, Quintero, Stacy Sagara Bollinger, Candido, uh, Harriet Elliott, Mark Williams. Any of those, anyone whose names I call, please just go feel free to line up. Speaker, which items would you like to speak to? I'd like to speak on all items and non-agenda public comment, which is a total of four total minutes. Is that right? You may speak on items number one, four through nine, 25, and number nine from Wednesday's agenda. You'll have you three minutes. You know what's so interesting is that, you know, you got ramen noodles noodling over there with Mr. Soto Stick while we're to talking the items, about please. tax equity. I am on subject. The councilwoman is standing there. I'm pointing it out regarding the hearing at the city council meeting dated January 19th, 2024, here in this council chamber. But you rather listen to this presentation that uh, Blockhead was presenting earlier. The issue here is the TEFRA, the resolution attached to the council file, and how you issue bonds in the amount not to exceed, but we already know they do exceed. And that's the reason why California is in a $40 billion deficit. And thank you, Mr. <laughs> Gavin Newsom and all the Democrats who support those type of bonds. And let's go to item number four, five, and six and seven, for example. Look at number five, another resolution for a goddamn street on, on regarding highway codes. No one really cares in particular because all our streets, all our infrastructure and capital improvements have been delayed, delayed, and delayed due to the fact that some dumb fool, and I won't mention the attorney name sitting over there in the blue suit, but delays to give us the information about current price. So let's go to item number six, for example. City-owned parcels. Well, what do we know about Hawaii? Was that a part of a city parcel that we lost someone's marriage certificate? Apparently so. Look at item number eight. Kevin DeLeon and Miss Park. Is that Tracy Park? The, tra the same wreck park that has wrecked every homeless community throughout our government. We're now in Beverly Hills. They're questioning what type of units you're going to build for the purpose of homelessness. Let's go to item number nine, in particular, because <laughs> that jackass, pink-faced dictator, is not here to talk about the relative declaring week for homelessness. You want to do a count? How many goddamn counts do you want? We've been doing counts ever since Donald Trump was so-called battled by the Democrats of California, who are the problem of homelessness. Los Angeles Homeless Services is because of your participation in doing nothing right, right, Mr. Clark? You and that rat back there, tell them to move over. Because again, LASA, what has LASA done for us, Ms. Attorney? Or Mr. Attorney? What have they done for us? When Ms. Richardson Price was involved in corruption along with Mr. Price, with all this development, what were we doing behind the scene to prevent that? What were we doing to stop it? Shame on you. 
Next speaker, please. Good morning, Mr. Blumenfield. It's always nice to see you over there. I mean, Which items would you like to speak to? Uh, I would like to speak to item one. Well, let's say all items, including nine. Um, yep. Ms. You'll have Hunt. three minutes. Yes, thank you. Ms. Hunt, I just wanted to co uh, compliment Ms. Hunt. She always has this wonderful, beautiful smile. We don't know each other, but she's always very kind, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Let's talk about item one. Uh, is that $100 million that we're going to give to Campbell Hall, or we're somehow we're going to be part of that? And yet, last week when we had the uh, arts, um, let's see, the music academy here, the kids begging you to give them a little money, keep their school open. What did you do? Mr. Uh, De Leon, it was nice that you said, oh, you feel for them. And, you know, I, I really like you, Mr. You've, you've come a long way. But what was done for those kids? Those kids had to be spread out. Yet you're going to give Campbell Hall. Now, Campbell Hall, a lot of nice people there. But all I can say to those kids who went to that school that you are shutting out is don't give up because it doesn't matter if you come from a Campbell Hall or you come from a school that is being closed where you went. You can make it in this city, in this country. If you got the cojones, you can make it wherever you want to go. Speaker, you should move on to your next there. items. You know, that's one. I'm going on to nine. May I go to nine? Yes or no? Please do. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, 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 you know, I want to thank Ms. Parks, you know, because uh, these people in the motorhome says, well, I'm not doing anything. I'm not throwing my trash everywhere. I want to just have a view of the, the Venice. I want to live here. You know what? I'm tired of living in Porter Ranch, and I want to move next to Jennifer Lopez, park my motorhome there, uh, and, and enjoy the view. But I can't. You know why? Because I can't afford it. We've done enough. We should do more for the homeless. But you know what? We have to give back our neighborhoods to the people who live in that uh, at the debate the other night for the uh, fourth, I think it was the fourth, the amount of people that were there and the amount of people that were listening, uh, it was amazing. So again, you know, homeless issue is a big issue, but what I really would like to see on Van Nuys Boulevard, and we asked for a cleanup, and Mr. Serrano, you said you're going to take care of that. But uh, I, I'm, I'm really surprised. A lot of the uh, People there said that Ms. Padilla was doing a great job, more than anybody else had done in the last 20-something years. But I called today, and the graffiti is there. The homeless are being detracted there. Uh, what are we going to do about that? How are we going to control that? Again, we need to help the, um, the homeless, but let's focus on the neighborhoods and those who get up every day and struggle with taking care of their kids, who go out to work, who come home, make the dinners, and take care of whatever's necessary. Let's let's help them, Mr. Uh, Bloomingfield. And uh, uh, I just realized, Mr. Kikorian, you're retiring, so we're only going to have a few old, oldie but goodies here after that. Thank Great. you. I'll be back for public comment, Mr. Kikorian. Great. Thank you. Uh, next speaker. Speaker, which items would you like to speak to? Uh, item number one, please. You'll have one minute. I'm sorry. You'll have one minute. And, and if you could state your name for the My record. My name is well. Mark Williams. I'm board president and executive director of Concerned Citizens of South Central Los Angeles. I have uh, packets for each council person that I'd like to distribute. Uh, a generation of black political leadership is about to perish in the state of California is about to become a Republican state because Councilman Price decided to protect their favorite criminal instead of the property taxpayers in the Ninth Council District and his children. He enabled a reign of terror that Speaker, goes on I, now. It's not clear that you're speaking to item number one. I'm sorry. I'm speaking to item number one because bond funds are involved in it. And if people have ears to hear, they know what I'm talking about. May I continue? You can finish your thought if you want, but yeah. 10 seconds to finish your thought. Uh, Mayor, 
10 seconds. Go the mayor is uniquely positioned and qualified to resolve these things if only she would lead, and she had, needs to do that very soon. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Next speaker. Harriet Elliott speaking on uh, item one. Um, uh, speaker, can you remind us of your name, please? Harriet Elliott. Okay, you'll have one uh, minute. The speaker before last said he saw a bunch of high schoolers uh, demanding more money. That's not what I saw. I saw uh, high schoolers asking to for homeless uh, drug addicts to not uh, come into their classroom. Uh, do you know the CIA is working overtime to get public opinion? They would love young people to think that uh, the homeless are their enemy. I, I think that even though the, uh, all the city council members took it all very seriously, uh, I think, how gullible can we be to think that this is actually a real issue? I don't think it is. The CIA is good at directed energy. They work in different modalities. I'm gonna talk about it at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Oh, and as far as what I, my p opinion on uh, this uh, floating bonds, I think that uh, I appreciate if you guys tell us the, uh, if the school is a charter school, and if so, why? Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Uh, speaker, please let us know which name you signed up under and which items you'd like to speak to. Oh, am I really that unrecognizable when I don't have a hat on? Stacy Segarra Bollinger. Um, just a point of order, will we be going into closed session before which general public speaker, comment? Which items would you like to speak to? Could you not answer my question? Are we gonna be going into closed session before general? We will not be going into closed session. Which items would you like to speak to? All items, please. You'll have three minutes. Great. Um, so item one is a $100 million bond regarding uh, what's now known as Campbell Hall. Um, I'm not sure the details regarding that acquisition, improvement, whatever. Um, some people have pointed out it's important to make sure when we're funding schools that they're not being misappropriated to charter schools that mostly serve affluent families or are taking tax dollars away from the, the general school system at large. LAUSD spends like more money than any school district in the country and has some of the worst outcomes. Um, probably, I don't know, maybe the high salaries of the administrators isn't really helping. Maybe the superintendent shouldn't make $400,000 plus a year. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, item four, walk of fame. I don't know why we're putting stars in a sidewalk while there's people dying on them. Um, priorities, people. Are we aware of the concept of triage? We take care of the most important issues first, and then when people aren't dying on the street, then we can decorate them with stars. Um, so I'm noticing some motions here. It looks like Councilmember Rahman and President Krikorian have cooperated a lot on this agenda. They've presented a lot of motions together, including item one, item six regarding the Studio City Business Improvement District. I'm just wondering why Councilmember Rahman hasn't communicated with President Krikorian the motion that the Sherman Oaks Neighborhood Council sent to her office quite some time ago regarding um, the public's right to speak and affirming Council Rule 7. Um, you can obviously cooperate with Paul Nithya, so why aren't you doing that for the people on behalf of your constituents like you've been officially asked? Um, what else do we have? Oh, we're gonna, um, bitch, you said what you said. You're going to light City Hall Red. You don't give a shit about people. You just want to be famous instead. I don't know. That, that one wasn't very good. I didn't, I just made that one up right now. Eat your heart out, Doja Cat. Um, why are we spending $400 every time we need to light the stupid fucking building? Why are we using all of that money in the, um, the general services, general city purposes fund? We have a general city purposes fund, and we're not putting every single cent we have to housing the people that are dying on the street? You look so bored right now, Councilmember Rahman. Am I boring you? Is this not important stick, to you? Stick to the you item, were having please. less stick, fun now than you were at the Soha the debate item, the please. other night. What item, item is that? Bob 
One of the items on the agenda that you've chosen to speak about. Oh, I'm speaking on the items. Um, so we have De Leon and Park lighting up the City Hall red. Fuck both of them. And um, y'all need to do a better job paying attention. Thank you. Uh, next speaker. And I'll just read a few more names. We have uh, Mike Greenspan, Andre Quintero. Uh, some of these names have already been called. Andrew Gravener, uh, Harold Elliott, Mark Williams, Richard Serrano, Brandon Smith, Lieutenant Colonel, Carol Storm, Dalton Gerlach, uh, Jennifer Kennedy. If I've called your name, feel free to line up. Speaker, which name did you sign up under and which uh, items would you like to speak to? Mike Greenspan on all items, including general public comment, which I know will be later, but for the record. All right, you'll have three minutes uh, for the agenda. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. What's Santa bringing today? Well, he's bringing bonds. What kind of bonds? A hundred million dollars worth of bonds. That's what. Well, our city's already a hundred million in the red because we busted the budget. It must have been Blumenfield's committee that caused the budget to bust, to pay off the pigs with money that we don't have. But now, does this mean Campbell Hall will cease to exist because we're buying it up? Well, what can I say? Hate to see it go. I mean, say it's not so. It's, an Epis it's a private Episcopalian high school that's 40% Jewish. Usually, these Christian groups, they don't want a Jew anywhere near. They just want their Jewish money and that's it, like the white trash evangelicals. But when you have an integrated country club or an integrated school, it's usually Jews and Episcopalians. They're very liberal as far as having Jews on their campus because they've got money to pay you know, no money, Campbell Hall. No problem is, is, is Campbell Hall. Well, let's go on to another item because we, we seem to think nothing of the money. But today, let's talk about the name of Garrett Morris on the Hollywood Hawk, Hall of, or Walk of Fame. He was one of the early Saturday Night Live people in their heyday, in the mid-'70s. And He's not in prison like Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby or that other actor that just recently got convicted of rape from 30 to 40 years ago. No, he's got a good clean record and it's Hollywood. Hollywood the way it should be. He's not with the racist Florida Tea Party like one of the Saturday night people that worked with Al Franken. No, it's, and it's Hollywood. You've got to remember something about Hollywood. Women give their pussies to get into Hollywood. Bottom line. Well, let's look at some of the other items that we have on the agenda. Oh, somebody, I think Council District 14, item 5. Yes, yeah, someone bought a subdivision for $15,000. Isn't that nice? Hey, brother, can you spare $15,000 so I could buy a subdivision too? Well, not a subdivision, a vacation. It's square footage of a street. Having given money to the campaign, that's what you get in return. You get free land. Well, free for a price, but compared to the market value, it's, it's a good bargain. If we all could get it at that price, we'd be great. Now, we have no money, so we're transferring $164,640 for the slope mitigation project. Well, that means there's a problem when, they, when you have to mitigate, because that means there are bad circumstances. And as far as the other stuff, the Fort Council District 14, number eight, where's the money? Very, very good. Next speaker, please. A uh, speaker, please tell us the name you signed up under and which items you'd like to speak to. It was Dalton Gerlach. I heard my name. It's regarding agenda item 11 from Wednesday, though. Can I just do it one minute really quick? You can come back at the end of the meeting and speak in general public comment. Okay. No yelling out. I don't know who that was yelling, but you're going to be removed if we identify who's yelling out. There's no, no more general public comment. Is anyone here left on the items, specifically on the items who we haven't called? Because uh, Andre Contero's name is here. If, you're, if you've come up to speak on the items and you haven't been called, not general public comment, you can line uh, up over here. Item number eight. Speaker, nine, which name did you seven. sign up under? Uh, my, I am an illegal immigrant, so I don't really have a name. 
My, Which items uh, would you like to speak to? I want to speak on eight, nine, and seven, possibly six or five, if I have enough time. You have three minutes. Okay, no, okay. no one signed up for eight, Number nine, eight, nine, eight, and seven, uh, sir. Uh, right now is about uh, Kevin De Leon and uh, Park. So, and then it's about uh, district of uh, funding services for Council District 14. And then I'm here to support Kevin De Leon because uh, Kevin De Leon lives matter, and then Tracy Parks lives matter, and then uh, this uh, motion eight lives matter. Uh, District 14 has the uh, skid row in it, and then uh, it, it is the center crisis for the uh, for the uh, uh, homeless services. So if any district need the most funding, if any district need the most support, most services, that will be the Skid Row district, which is the district 14. Uh, however, uh, I don't see many uh, council members are working collaboratively with Kevin De Leon. And then what I see is for the past the several years, several decades, several thousands of years that Skid Row, every politician are talking about, we're going to uh, help improve the homeless. So we're going to you know, solve all the homeless problem. But the fact is Speaker, the people you should move on, on to another, your next item. My next item, uh, my next item is number nine. Uh, regarding homeless count. Okay, homeless count is very important because even the previous item and then this item, they all talking about homeless. So the homeless is, uh, everybody are talking about homeless count and the homeless. What I know is year after year, day after day, uh, the homeless uh, population continue to race uh, it never goes down but at the same time you're uh, you are throwing away 100 million 200 million 1 billion 2 trillion at the same time the continue continue a growing number of homeless on the street and then most important on the Kevin De Leon's office so we really make sure we have to do uh, a very important homeless count because a lot of people homeless like me we don't even have a name like people like me uh, we don't even have a driver's license people Speaker, like me you should move on will, to your next item uh, people will never get counted and then the next item is the next item is have a nice day you're terrible fuck you Speaker, please let us know which name you signed up under and which items you'd like to speak to. Richard Serrano, all public comments on uh, all items? You'll have three minutes. Thank you. Number one, the, Mr. Candido was 100% right when he said, how are you putting $100,000 to a school that is privileged and yet you forget about the rest? De Leon going over to the school it's been closed since the Friday they showed up here. I called them and asked them, what can we do? He said, they've already made a decision. As the horse was already out of the corrals. Come on, you guys need to really pay attention. We're about to do the same thing. We care not about the people that need. District 6 and 7, Van Nuys, all that area, the businesses, we're putting a soft rail there. But we're not telling the people, the constituents that live there, because they're moderate income, what's going to happen after the 80,000, 80 houses that they've already purchased for that project, what happens with imminent public domain, that they come take your property even if you don't want to sell it. They need to be informed. Most of them aren't. Speaker, I did you the should footwork. move on to your next item. Number nine. The count, yeah, it counts, but be transparent. You guys still talk after the fact. We got the report after we gave public comment. We should have had that at the beginning. <laughs> Everything should be transparent. The, la the thing we lost in the city chamber with four indicted, some incarcerated, is the hope, and that's the last resort. I'm favored by God. That means God first. And you, I don't know if from the synagogues to the churches, do you just show up to this council just to be seen? Last night, Padilla could have answered a question that you voted on on Wednesday to the Sun Valley. 
And I said, Ms. Pradia, you can put, bring that up about that $500 uh, card from Visa Speaker, you need for the to RVs. An agenda item. Good right now. Okay, that, that concludes uh, uh, comments on agenda items. Uh, we can now move. Was there any other? That's, there's nobody else listed on this, on this list. We'll still have time for public comment. Are, are you, we have someone here for, for agenda items? All right, Mr. Spindler. This is my first time here. Um, yeah, I think you know how the process works. I, I don't know. You know you need to sign up. Okay. What item okay. do you want to speak on? Uh, let's see. Number one. Trying to catch my breath here. I just had a high right, speed You have three chase. minutes to start his time. Okay. So let's see here. Number two. Ramen noodle. Number two has already been voted on. Number one? You can speak to number one. Well, look at that. Hey, Tania. You're not in prison yet. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> All right. Number one. So let's see, Raman joining our council petty pink skin president. What happened to you? Speak to the Where items. Where was that nice lady? Speak to the item, sir. That broke my heart and got rid of my friend David Rowe. Oh, and number one, Bob, she's a co-sponsor. It's on fucking topic. Ask Mr. Buckethead, he's a lawyer, he knows. So, fuck Tapra. Is that on topic? Fuck revenue bonds. Is that on topic? Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. So now, is that right? We got Garrett Morris on the Walk of Fame. See, Garrett Morris did something so racist, outrageous, that you guys are going to pull this nomination when I tell you what happened. He insulted the hearing impaired. Many times. Yes, he actually said, when Chevy Chase is doing the news, Garrett Morris got in there and faked that he was the association president for the hearing impaired. So he was going to repeat with sign language the top topic. No, he didn't do that. What he did was he would yell it louder so the hearing impaired could hear it. So he would say, our top story tonight, and Garrett Morris would go, our top story tonight is General Francisco Franco is still dead. General Francisco Franco is still dead. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. So you'll see that on YouTube. So congratulations. Stop calling Kevin a racist, a homophobe, and prejudice because Speaker, you, you guys are honoring. Item. You guys are honoring somebody who def fucking def defecates on the hearing impaired like that. Mr. Spindler, and you, you guys need to move honor on to your him. next item. This is too important to get one minute on. It's too goddamn important. So that proves that you're full of shit about Kevin because you guys fucking honor people like this. And then we have the motion to get rid of Donald Trump's star. You don't even vote on it. So you've already exhausted your time on that's that. That's what it is. Now, number 19 says, I'm a Deo de Leon. Don't confuse it with Kevin. I'll be back here to shit on you all and say fuck you Thank very, you very soon. Much. Okay. That concludes all speakers on the items. Uh, before we go to the desk, Mr. De Leon, you had uh, an announcement, is that correct? Or a comment? Yeah, Mr. President, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, colleagues, just very quickly, um, when my family uh, migrated uh, north uh, to the United States, specifically to uh, California, I had a number of individuals, for some inexplicable reason, uh, make a sharp right turn and went all the way to the East Coast. So I have a couple family members who've come all the way from the East Coast, from New Jersey to be specific. I just want to introduce my tia, my aunt, which is Delia, as well as my cousin here, Vivian. Uh, they're out here in California visiting, you know, and uh, we decided 
we decided uh, to bring them down to City Hall uh, so they can see. And they're from New Jersey, so uh, you know how crazy things are in New Jersey. I think they think this City Hall is much crazier than anything back on the East Coast. But I just want to welcome both my aunt, Delia, as well as my cousin. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you much, Mr. President. Okay, and then uh, we have to do phones for the items, so if we could go to the phones for uh, items. Speaker, what items would you like to speak on? Hello? Which items would you like to speak on, ma'am? Hello? Which items would you like to speak to? Jelly babes. All items. This is Shelly babes. You'll have three Aaron minutes. Damon. Uh, yeah, all items. That's items one, four through nine, and 25, and right. items nine from Wednesday's agenda. Your time is going. Go ahead. Uh, first, I would say. Uh, good morning to uh, fellow, well, I'm not a war pig, but all of you are a war pig. Uh, getting like the which is that black map, you know? The, that is going to cover the R, pay for a star, how many thousands of dollars that costs when you have people drugged out sitting on your street, that's disgusting. And you're worried about celebrating some kind of celebrity that uh, you guys should be disgusted with yourselves. You got people on the street. And then you got, you got your, your over the free money, $1,000 at school. Yeah, you bunch of race baiters. You fucking race faders, evil minds that plot to strain. Fico communist. How many callers? Uh, what, yeah. what else? That's the other item. Uh, you're just a bunch of war pig communists worried about your salaries. Uh, you, you get paid way too much these things for anyone but yourselves. And you're all going to be indicted and put in, and you all know it in your heart. And that one lady that didn't know the Pledge of Allegiance, that's a shame. She should be ashamed of herself. The first day she comes in, she doesn't even know the Pledge of Allegiance, the United States. Sick bitch. Next caller, what items would you like to speak on? Speaker with the last four digits, 1403, please press star six to mute yourself. Speaker, which items would you like to speak to? Next speaker, which items would you like to speak on? Yeah, it's Eric Previn. I'd like to speak on the available items and a general public comment later. This is the That's third meeting of the weekend. That's items 1, 4 through 9, 25, and items, item 9 from Wednesday Agendas. You have three minutes. Okay. Well, I can also speak on the uh, the closed session one that you rejected, correct? The one for the... You can speak in the closed session and your band. general public comment. Oh, then, okay, I'll go to item 1, which is Campbell Hall. Okay. So how many minutes do I have? for all the available items? Mr. Previn, your time is three. running. Okay, I have three I have three minutes, thank you. You should be more candid and open about that. So there's been some confusion. This is a bond uh, or a TEFRA hearing, which is a process that lets residents in a neighborhood or an area give their voice or opinion on the issuance of tax exempt bonds. Now this is a particularly nice private school right on Laurel Canyon about I would say 25 feet from one of the big battles of the underpass, which both Raman and Krikorian know. Mm -hmm. Defer hearings are being abused by this 
city regularly because you don't allow an actual hearing. You don't even tell people what's really going on, what the project is. The reasons to oppose a project at a TEFR hearing would be if there's significant public opposition, like for Harvard Westlake, which is not on the docket today, but which Raman completely abandoned us after Krikorian sold us out, or environmental concerns. And I think people, this school is right next to a freeway, but nobody gives a shit because they have a lot of money. Other matters could be like land use issues, like what are they going to put up? Has anybody disclosed? I know they've been buying up some properties in the area. I had a kid who went there. It's a good school. And what about the community impact? You know, that was the Speaker, thing that you should uh, move on Nikki to your Rahman next item. Did. Well, what are you talking about? Uh, that is my, I'm talking about the TEFRA hearings. Uh, it applies to all of the TEFRA hearings on the agenda. Are you going to interrupt me? I mean, I, I'm going to have to shift to another item in the middle of my speech. Wow, what a toxic group you are. All right, I'll go. Let me do it. I'll find, I'm, I'm going to heed your call. Shameful, shameful, shameful business. Um, well, the closed session item 21, you rejected the offer. And you the closed did, session so items is not available right now, Speaker. Okay, then how about 25? The continuation agenda. You can speak to item number can 25. Speak? Okay, fine. Boy, what a toxic group. I mean, you really, this is insulting to Mr. Joe Gatlin, who is being appointed by uh, McCosker to serve um, on the Harbor Area Planning Commission. I cannot think of a nicer, more loyal gentleman to the former city attorney lobbyist, McCosker. So whatever kind of controversy you're going to have, don't worry about it. They were out there with the mayor giving a little sign across the street to recognize Gatlin uh, just a, under a year ago. This is a wonderful love fest and a hoisting up of a great leader of a church to do the bidding for the folks who need to get stuff done down by the port. And what a great speaker, your time uh, is up. honor. Next speaker, which items would you like to speak on? Hello. Which items are available for public comment? Items number one, four through nine, 25, and number nine from Wednesday's agenda. Which items would you like to speak to? Four, four through nine. Hold on once. I'm sorry, can you repeat which items um, you'd like to speak to? It looks like... Um, um, give me one. It looks like none. You'll have one minute. Okay. Um, I am in support. I'm in support of item number nine. We definitely need to count the homeless, and um, what we need to do is we need to find um, families who are willing to take their loved ones who are homeless into their home because most of the homeless people are out of state. And um, we want to look into decreasing the counts. And um, one thing we want to uh, like to mention is that we want to tell the states like Hawaii, Alaska, not to send their homeless population into Los Angeles. Almost people are being dumped in the city of Los Angeles, just to let you guys know. That, that'll be it. Thank you. Next speaker, which items would you like to speak on? I'm going to wait for general public comment. Uh, we'll be taking general public comment at the end of the meeting. You can call back later. I'm going to wait for general public comment, okay? Speaker, we're not taking general public comment at the moment. You may call back at the near the end of the meeting. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm Next speaker, which items would you like to speak on? Lobster here. I'm going to speak on everything I want to talk about because I have 10 appendages and two claws and I'm red as a motherfucker. Not the speaker, you may speak on items things. number one, four through nine, 25 one, and number seven, nine from 20, Wednesday's agenda. I don't care. Shout out to Damon. That's all I want to say. Bye.
Speaker, your time is running. That speaker has hung up. We'll move on to the next speaker. Which items would you like to speak on? Yeah, can we get Grote or Fobble out here? Because this city attorney is extremely hard of hearing. Speaker, which items would you like to speak to? Groat or Fobble? Which items would you like to speak to, Speaker? I'd like a new city attorney. We can move on to the next speaker. Next speaker, which items would you like to speak on? Good morning, nerds and virgins. Brock Landers, Los Angeles private investigator. I would like to speak on uh, all public I or all open items. That's items one, four through nine, 25, and number nine from Wednesday's agenda. You'll have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, number one, that's a lot of zeros. That's one less digit than I use in ASCII 2 to represent the Brock Landers Love Club in text messages. An eight, eight capital X's, and the capital D. It's true. It's very true. Three, why promote vacations in an alley? I do think that we should consider changing the Roy and Figueroa Cross Street to Figueroa and Smoke and Scam Boulevard. Number four, give the man a star. Um, Way to go saying that a person of color shouldn't be getting his star on the Walk of Fame. To quote my boy Jason, a smoke and scam viewer, it's mighty white of you to tell a person of color to wait for the white man to get his shit together before we can take care of him. The Dems have been telling the people of color that since LBJ. Shout out to the CIF. I prefer my CIF to go down in the first half. Seven. I think it's insulting that you name anything the Slope Migration Project. It's bad enough that you call the alert for missing Native American girls the feather alert. Eight. Uh, in a country and city where even the homeless are overweight, I think that we need to do more to bring awareness to heart disease. I'm curious how the price of eating at the city hall is down to $400 from the $500 when the price of everything else is going up. Uh, number nine. Ramen and Kikorian, did you not realize that the week of the 22nd was coming up? I know when something is really important to me, I wait until the Friday before to ask people to get involved. Mr. Herman seems to be a little less 5150 after the Xmas break, and I'm all for it. Mental health is a huge issue with homelessness and in this country. And why are we giving so much money to the homeless industrial complex? I think that we should stop giving money to any nonprofit whose leadership makes more than $250,000 a year. If the people in these nonprofits do a good job and cure homelessness, they are going to be out of work. Do you really think they're going to try that hard? And to KDL's family, you guys should be super proud because he's the only one of these motherfuckers that ever stands up and says that we need to watch what the homeless industrial complex is doing. I'm out. That means you can put me back on hold for general public comment, and please don't forget about me today. Okay. Next, next speaker, which items would you like to speak on? I'm going to wait for general public comment. We're not taking general public comment at the moment. You'll have to call back near the end of the meeting. Okay. There are no more speakers on the queue for item public comment. Great. Thank you. Okay. What's uh, before us? I believe uh, items one, four through eight, and 24. Is that right for a vote? That's correct. Okay. Uh, let's open the roll on that. Close the roll. Tally the votes. 12 eyes. Okay, next, uh, I believe we have item nine was called special. Is that correct by Ms. Rahman? Just wanted to draw attention, everyone. Uh, one of the things I'm asked about most, I'm asked most in this role is, how can we help on the issue of homelessness? And my response has always been to get active, and there's an easy way to do that next week. Joining the upcoming Greater Los Angeles Homeless Count. Every January here in LA, we go out, 
We walk or drive the streets and count people who are experiencing unsheltered homelessness across every street of this city. Thousands of Angelinos volunteer every year, and this data is critical because it helps us get the resources we need from the federal government. So getting this count right every year is very, very important. This year, the count is being held next week on January 23rd, 24th, and 25th. There have been a lot of volunteer signups already, but we do need many, many more volunteers, and we particularly need more volunteers in the Valley. So all of our Valley reps, I think we need to recruit more uh, people to come out and count the Valley streets. So I'm looking forward to seeing many more people out signing up for those sites. Whether you're a first-time volunteer or you do this every single year, it's easy, it's safe, it's straightforward, so I encourage you to join us. To find a count, you just need to go to theycountwillyou.org, enter your zip code, and you'll find the nearest place to you. And my office will also be hosting the Studio City Count on January 23rd at 8 p.m. at the First Christian Church of North Hollywood, and we would love to see you there. I think we really, really need people to turn out, and this time is the most important time for recruitments, so I wanna just encourage all of my colleagues on this body to get out there and recruit more volunteers. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. DeLeon. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I just wanna uh, emphasize what Ms. Rahman brought up, and I, I thank her for bringing up this issue again. Uh, the, the one thing I just wanna reemphasize, we, we do this homeless uh, count, which is very important, on an annual basis. We've been doing it year after year after year after year. <laughs> I just want to underscore the following. When we get the data, the question is, what do you do with the data? If you're not building, if you're not acquiring, you simply are not doing. So counting and counting and counting and counting more, whether numbers increase somewhat or decrease somewhat, they're always a snapshot in time on an annual basis. And this is a challenge I just issue out to everyone uh, together, collectively, including myself as well, too. We can count ad nauseum and count as much as it wants, it makes us feel good to count because we're part of some sort of structure, but I think we would all agree with each other. If we're not building or not acquiring, you know, to put those numbers that we counted under a roof, then we're not doing much. So this is just a challenge, not just to the city council, but to the county board of supervisors, to our friends in Congress and the state legislature, in every possible way to give us the revenues that we need to build those housing units or to acquire those housing units. Uh, and I just want to just reemphasize uh, uh, doubly why it's critical that the action that we do after the count with LASA, with PATH, and all of the other service providers, uh, with the mayor and elected officials. It's, it's a great photo op when we go out there, but at the end of the day, it's what we do with the actual work. Other than that, como dice mi abuela, es puro weedy weedy wada wada. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Padilla. Yes, I also want to thank uh, Councilmember Nithya Raman for uh, bringing up the importance of how we all need to actively engage um, and recruit volunteers for this event. Um, they produced a report at the end of this event, and last year uh, it showed that homelessness had dropped in the 6th District, which uh, if you live in the 6th District, you know you see that that is inaccurate. Um, my observation and my critique is that it probably showed low numbers because there wasn't a council member in the 6th district to recruit folks for the volunteer event, which is why my team is taking this very seriously, making sure that we have plenty of volunteers in order to do the count um, accurately. Um, because as mentioned by Mr. De Leon, these numbers are taken very serious by multiple entities at all levels of government. So for those that are watching, if you are free, uh, please go to uh, my office's uh, website and social media pages to register. We need as many volunteers as possible. It's not just about one person going out to one block. Um, it's a very sophisticated program. And if we can have multiple volunteers, one person can drive and one person can track. But it's very important and I highly encourage everyone to attend and that we all take this serious because if there's one thing we've observed is that this homeless crisis is price, it's, it's pricey. So to go after those dollars, let's make sure we have the accurate data. Thank you. Great, thank you. Seeing no other speakers on the queue, uh, let's open the roll. Close the roll, and tally the votes. 12 ayes. Okay, this item is adopted. Uh, let's move to the next item called special, uh, item 25, called special by Mr. McCosker. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, members. 
Um, I'm going to urge an I vote on item 25, which is a recommendation, a nomination from our mayor for Joe Gatlin to serve on the Harbor Area APC. I want to say a few words about Mr. Gatlin, who's here with me right now. He's a lifetime Harbor resident, uh, born and raised in San Pedro, has a gigantic family in the Harbor area, a gigantic and wonderful and diverse family. Uh, he is no stranger, even though this is, I think, his first appointment by the mayor, he is no stranger to public service. He's been engaged in public service for many, many, many years, a family legacy. I know your mom, I think, chaired the YWCA back in the day. Yeah. And Joe was the founder of the NAACP chapter of San Pedro and Wilmington and now Palos Verdes. Uh, he has been engaged in numerous, numerous activities throughout the Harbor area. Uh, Joe and I and other concerned members of the public are taking on a response to a hate crime yeah. that happened in our community that breaks our hearts. Uh, and he will serve admirably um, as a commissioner for the Harbor Area Planning Commission, and I would just urge an I vote. Thank you, Tim. Great seeing those other speakers on the queue. I would also urge an I vote, and uh, let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tally the vote. 12 I. Congratulations. All right. Uh, <laughs> Next item is uh, on the desk, I believe, is from Wednesday, January 17th, item number nine. Uh, we can vote on that matter. Uh, oh, Ms. Padilla is on the queue for that. Is that correct? Ms. Padilla, are you on the queue for this, or is that, is that a leftover? Leftover. Leftover, okay. If we could clear the queue, please. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, open the roll on this item. Close the, what's that? We're, to be clear, we're, we're voting on the item from last week, which we already voted on, but it needs 12 votes. Uh, so we're opening the roll. Close the roll. Tally the vote. And... Uh, 12 ayes. 12 ayes. Let's, without objection, that will be moved forthwith. Okay. Is there... What is left on the desk? Mr. President, the council can now take up general public comment. Okay. We will move to general public comment. Please stop clapping, Mr. Herman. Uh, Andrew Grabner, Dalton Gerlach, Michael McCann, um, Jennifer Kennedy, Linda Gerlach, Brandon Smith, Mike Greenspan, uh, Rabbi Dusty, Andre Quintero. You heard your name. Come on up. Who's ever on deck can come sit down over there so we can move quickly through public comment. Uh, Mr. Gravener, you have one minute. Go ahead. All right. As we all know, it's at or near the beginning of the meeting, right? Right, everyone? I mean, we're definitely, you're definitely in compliance with the rules here. Um, you know, you just keep violating the rules, and, you know, it's up to you all to hold Paul accountable to the rules. Um, but, you know... You won't do that because you're either in full support of this, of this guy or you're, you know, a coward who doesn't want to do anything about it. Um, but, you know, it's really ridiculous. You know, people are calling in. People are confused. I don't know if I'm supposed to raise my hand, lower my hand, you know, when I need to join the meeting, you know. You're just making it as complicated as possible to get public comment. We all know why, because you're racists, corrupt like Curran Price walking past right now. Um, <laughs> racist like Kevin DeLeon, or really most of you. You know, let's do public comment where it's supposed to be. Kevin okay, needs to Okay, thank you. Next speaker. Come on up. Get the next person on deck. Let's try to move efficiently. Go ahead, sir. State your name. Hi, uh, Brandon Smith. Wonderful. All right. Uh, yeah, good morning. Uh, hello, council, council members. Uh, I live in CD5, uh, Councilwoman Yaroslavsky's district. Um, since the middle of last year, uh, Councilwoman Yaroslavsky's senior advisor, Andrew DeBlock, and uh, her head of housing and homelessness, Zach, uh, have generously given their time to help me address some serious issues of enforcement with the housing department. Um, despite their full schedules, they've shown a willingness to engage, 
for which I'm truly grateful. Uh, in fact, Andrew had scheduled our next meeting for next Wednesday, the 24th, uh, but unfortunately, uh, I have not been able to reach him to confirm. Uh, I don't see Councilwoman Yaroslavsky here today, but uh, Andrew, if you're here, or if someone who knows Andrew DeBlock, uh, please, uh, you have mail. Uh, thank you in advance for your response, and thank you, uh, whoever hears this message, for delivering it. Great. Thank you. Uh, next speaker. Okay, start his time. Mr. Greenspan, go ahead. Okay. Mike Greenspan, first and foremost, clean up Van Nuys Boulevard, Ms. Padilla. That's probably the most important thing she should do other than just collect her quarter of a million dollar paycheck in her fancy vehicle. Now, today is Friday, and direct from God's garbage bin to Cantor's Deli in the Fairfax and all the other Jewish delicatessens, you have clam chowder. Now, that's not a food we should be eating, at least according to God and Leviticus 11. In fact, they've got these bad oysters that are from Mexico if you look at your Bible, you'll see it's food you shouldn't be eating. But I guess we have to have trafe in the Jewish delis. All I can say, if you're going to serve clam chowder in a Jewish deli, do me one favor. Serve it with queer rabbi. Okay, thank you. Uh well, just a reminder, even though it's general public comment, it's comment related to items that would come, related to city business. It's not just on uh, clam chowder. So, next speaker. Yeah, it's about time Ms. Padilla pay attention to her district and help support maybe like a gentleman by the name of Candido. But apparently she has too much time on other projected projects. Spend the time, clean up Van Nuys, and the issue about homelessness, it's a crime in California. And the reason why is because your dumbass governor, yes, Governor Gavin Newsom, has put us in a deficit that not even Trump could save California. So when you go to the polls and you vote for Trump, remember, it was Trump who made reforms that actually changed some of the things going on in our local government. Now, if you want the same corruption, the same bullshit, and the same stupid motherfuckers that go kill children from Israel to Hamas, help us support Hamas. Trump! Okay, next speaker. Time has expired. Let's go to the next person. Welcome. Morning. My name is Michael McMahon. I'm a former 14-year Los Angeles police officer, founder of the anti-mandate coalition Roll Call for Freedom. I'm here again today to demand the end to your offensive and draconian mandate. City Ordinance, City Ordinance 187-134 must be rescinded immediately. You are nothing but a collection of criminals and pathological egotists. Why haven't you taken up Tracy Park's motion? Are you waiting for something else, another scare in election year? Your mandate has taken a sledgehammer to the city's workforce, unable to fill the vacancies you created with a nearly 25% job vacancy rate. Your city employees just want the opportunity to work without fear of forced, ineffective, life-altering shots to do so. Federal EUA law states that an EUA product, which they were, cannot be mandated under threat of penalty. You gaslit us, you ostracized us, and you fired us. It's time to end this mandate stop all boards of rights and return all city employees to their jobs and vote on this motion by Tracy Park. Great. Thank you, sir. Uh, next speaker, please. You can get the next speaker on deck. Go ahead, man. Uh, good morning. My name is Jennifer Kennedy. I'm a COVID litigator and a freedom lawyer. I'm holding six pages of paper, your ordinance 187134, which demands submission to the COVID shots and EUA investigational product under threat of penalty. Under federal law, you didn't have the right to do that and you don't have it now. But in 2021, with these six pages, you did. You stripped careers and commands from dedicated public servants. You broke the bonds of brotherhood in your own 
police and fire departments. You caused chaos, despair, divorce. You caused pain across generations. So today, I will see your six pages with mine. This 80 pages is my federal lawsuit against the city of Los Angeles, Mayors Garcetti and Bass, for violating the constitutional rights of individuals to just say no. To this day, you are continuing this policy. Your pages say approved as to legality. Mine say you didn't have the right then, and you don't have it now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, continuing to read some names, Rabbi Dusty, Andre Quintero, Harriet Elliott, Richard Serrano, Lieutenant Colonel Stacy Segarra Bollinger, uh, Nemiroff, Carol Storm, Arnold Sachs, Mark Williams, Goat Puppet, um, Dalton Garrelick. Go ahead, and that should be all the names. Go ahead, sir. Please state your name and you have a minute. Hi, George Nimrov, thanks for your service. Uh, back in uh, California for a couple of years now, left in 92, helped uh, Councilman Wax uh, get rid of Malathion spraying over Los Angeles in 88. I've reached out to the mayor's office a couple of times, actually for three months now, no response. Universal health care solved in two words, sliding scale. Did it in Oregon in 2001. Uh, a couple of uh, other problems here that can be made better. Uh, temporarily unhoused, three things. Community engagement, get the leadership, going here a little bit more. Rick Caruso said he was gonna make the problem go away. Where's Rick? And uh, maybe the secret word of all, five letters, money. Need a little bit more money. That's my, my uh, uh, quick solution to temper. Adult abuse is a lot. Great, thank you, sir. Next speaker. Harriet Elliott. NATO scientist Robert Duncan spoke at the BASES conference in, United, in UK, England, in 2018. Um, he spoke about neuronal dust, which was new to me, but he also uh, revealed things about directed energy. This is not a uh, CIA author. This guy is a, uh, Del Monte, he's a professor in the LA, uh, in the United States, and he will not go to Ca uh, Cuba. Uh, he will not go to China. He says he gets, uh, uh, he becomes a CIA agent, uh, uh, an intelligence a agent over in China. Anyway, uh, I, I recommend this book. It was easy for me to read. Um, anyway, Robert Duncan talks about uh, different modalities. He talks about freezing your brain with silence. Um, the, my friends uh, at the library, um, one of them is a cybernaut. Okay, next speaker. All right, I'm really curious, um, maybe someone from Councilmember Raman's office can tell me why the taxpayers are paying Ryan Ahari's salary for him to be Councilmember Raman, little, his, her little bitch, I swear to God. The other night at Soha, she shook her empty cup and he hopped to it and brought her some water. This was at a campaign event. I don't think Ryan Ahari should be campaigning for Councilmember Raman because we pay him. Oh, how you tried to get us to believe your lies at the Soha meeting Wednesday night. You and Ethan bitching, but a candidate was missing. Why didn't Levon get an invite? The truth is Weaver's their guy. We know the reason why. They don't want to split the vote. Why don't you want to debate Levon? Nithya Raman's a joke. Nithya Raman is a joke. Okay, thank you. Next speaker. City of LA, February 2nd. Vamos a tener una junta, la llantar de Van Nuys, el día segundo, para hablar del metro. 
porque las personas que están apuntados a protectarlos no les han informado todas las cosas que les pueden quitar las casas si un, no las un, quieren vender. Un momento para traducir. Para traducir. Hola, aló. Sí, eh, por favor, podría repetir lo que dijo. No, no llegué a, a tomar nota. Sorry, I'm bilingual. Oh, oh, sí, no, pero como está hablando en español, si ¿sí puede. No, sí, claro, o sea, sigo en inglés si quiere. Y ¿Cómo, ya ¿cómo usted dice? Tiene trans... Ok, estábamos bien. Ok. Perdón. Sí, continúa. Voy a hacerlo en inglés para que sea más fácil. Ok. Perdóneme. He wants to do it in English now. Ok, okay. We, if you want to start again, you can translate. Please. Go ahead, go ahead, sir, and, and it, she'll be able to translate this time. Go ahead, start his time again. Go ahead. Sorry sir. about that. Uh, just uh, again, being bilingual just goes naturally. You, you can you can speak in Spanish if you wish, and we can no, no, we're good. Thank you. Either way, can it's fine. Can we start fine. my clock again? I'm sorry. I. Go ahead. 100. You're right. I'm doing my job. Um, with this being said, there are people here that are not doing their job. De Leon, I wish you had that beautiful heart that you had when you started. But for you to speak about indigenous people the way you did, it hurts. I forgive you, but I can't forget that. The other things to everyone else. Ms. Padilla, you asked me what I'm doing in the Van, uh, Salem Valley uh, neighborhood meeting last night, indirectly. But they were invited me because they know I'm a write-in candidate. And you should be taking care of the areas that you're supposed to protect. 6279 Van Nuys Boulevard, corner of Sylvan, there's graffiti there, been there. We're gonna have a meeting February 2nd, talking to the Valley about public intimate domain. If you don't wanna sell them, they'll come take them from you. Don't let them sugarcoat it. Thank you, next speaker. That's right, and you heard Amelda Padilla says that she's doing her job, liar. Van Nuys Boulevard looks like shit. Please clean it up. Woodley has no street lights. Burbank has no street lights. But Channel 5 last night said somebody's doing a good job. And that's Tracy Park kicking ass. Let's get it. That's right. Then we got Kevin brought his family here today to see the racists that come up here and blast him. Where are they? They're fucking gone, that's right. So Kevin will get reelected, he will win. He wasn't a fucking racist. So your family, you tell them, no racista, nada. Nuri Martinez is a racista. Nuri Martinez mucho gorda. All right, happy fucking weekend. Okay, next speaker. And I've called all the names, so if you haven't heard your name and you're here for general public comment, just come up to the side. Go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you very much. I hope Van Nuys Boulevard starts getting cleaned up, but we got to do what we can do. Mr. Bloomingfield, you're a victim. You're a victim of an individual in that corner named Simi Park. She's a very toxic individual, and you got sucker punch on having her within your council. If you saw all the HR complaints that she makes, you're going to become a victim too. I've never had a problem with you, and I'm a very proud conservative Republican, and you've always been honest and truthful to me when you're up in Sacramento and so forth. Just be very careful of Simi Park over there. As you know, because of her purported racism, she had to pay $99,000 uh, where the city paid it against a black person. Every day with her, she's a toxic individual. Just be very careful. Don't become another victim with other people of Simi Park right in the corner right there, hiding her face and being the best piece of trash she can be. Thank you. Next speaker. Go ahead, Mr. Sachs. Thank you. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity. One of the most significant events didn't occur in this room, although they had the KKK in this room, 
which is really a significant considering through the whole country there's never been any African American who ever got dressed up as a grand wizard for the KKK and went into a political meeting, which is really significant. But the other significant thing occurred at the Board of Supervisors hearing room. One of the, one of the supervisors leaned over and spoke to his mic and, and mentioned that he should say, he said, tell Mr. Sachs that the 21st century began in the year 2000. And it turns out he had a nickname as the Grand Intervener. And he stole $660 million, which brings me back to the name of Todd Gurley. Because Todd Gurley was happy to get health care. And he stole that money to build a stadium that nobody wanted in his district. It's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. And the time and attention. We need more Thank, time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hold my time, please. Thank you. Hold his time till he's ready. Uh, thank okay. you. Uh, next you. month, uh, it'll be 35 years that I've been here, Mr. Bloomingfield. 35 years. I'm changing my paradigm. I'm, I'm not going to focus on corruption and, uh, because Martinez is gone and the predecessor are gone, and that's going to end the sixes in the sixes. Uh, Ms. Padilla, you don't have to listen to me. Look at me. You don't even have to. You can turn your back on me. But I can't turn my back on Van Nuys Boulevard, where I started in 72, homeless, and the good people of Van Nuys Boulevard picked me up off the streets, gave me a job, educated me, and supported me. So never, ever will I turn my back on Van Nuys Boulevard. And to these two beautiful ladies, I'm available and I'm sitting over here. Anyway, don't tell Mr. DeLeon, he might get mad. But uh, Van Nuys is a great place. Ms. Padilla, you have the opportunity of a lifetime. You were here with your mother and you made a promise. I want from you just to keep that prom. Okay, don't look at me. You know what? I don't give a damn. You know, yeah, okay, use your thank phone. Thank you. That's more important. You know next, what, Miss Padilla? Next speaker, please. Thank you. Next speaker. I believe is the last speaker. Is that right? Uh, good morning. Um, I am here to support that uh, uh, former LAPD officer because I just heard her. I mean, he's, he's probably coming a moment ago uh, regarding the uh, vaccine mandate or, or something. Um, I, th I, I always thought that people quit LAPD is because, uh, you know, they, they find a better salary in a nearby city. But uh, from uh, that previous officer, it seems like a, a big number of officers quit is because of some sort of an unlawful vaccination mandate. I definitely believe that uh, as a human, I, I really believe that uh, I should be uh, in charge of my own body, what goes into my body, what's coming out of my body, I thought the government cannot force me to put anything inside of my body. And then most important, I'm here to support Candido uh, regarding clean up the Van Nuys Boulevard, and then uh, clean up the Van Nuys Boulevard and the Skid Row. Okay, that concludes uh, in-person public comment. Let's go to the phones. First speaker, please begin your one minute. Thank you, it's Eric Previn. Um, so the, my concern is the way you're handling the closed session. Item 21 was a, an item that you rejected the offer of the plaintiff, which was a African-American driver for Shondaland, a big mm -hmm. TV show produced by Disney. And the LAPD, you know, dramatically arrested him and people tried to say, he works with us, what's going on? There's no crime. And he was pinned to the ground. So that's a terrible story. But the public didn't get a chance to speak on it because of your crafty play. You say it's going to be a closed session, but then you do an audible and say, actually, we don't need a closed session. Just vote. But that denies the public an opportunity when you say a million dollars to say a million dollars. How about 500,000 or how about two million, you bastards? So you're really out of line there. And I'm going to have to do it, Bloomingfield. I know you like the goatee, but I'm going to take you in and have a shave. We're going to have to go to court. This is not an acceptable protocol. The public has an interest in these closed sessions. And regarding, uh, there's so many other things on the agenda, your committee meetings, you had a meeting on December 13th, so you claim that you okay. heard people. Thank you, Mr. Previn, that's your time. Uh, just as a reminder, all the closed session items were heard in committee and the public did have a chance to comment uh, during committee, as is, has been the procedure for many years. Next speaker. Next speaker, please begin. 
Hi, before you begin the time, I just wanted to, to make an, a note that item number four I wasn't allowed to speak on. My hand was lowered um, in chambers for some reason. So do, do I get the two minutes or do I only get one minute to speak on general public comment? You have 48 seconds left. Go ahead, public comment. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I want to clarify then before Mr. Previn and the previous agenda items, which I weren't allowed to speak on, um, it cost the city zero dollars for Walk of Fame stars. The BOE, I believe, even bills for the A permit still. And the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, who installed the stars in the Walk of Fame, were listed as property owners in a felony complaint for case number BA492871, where the defendant smashed the Trump star to bits. And in two separate, almost identical cases, two separate criminal defendants paid thousands to the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. And then when an LA Times reporter shared property ownership claims from the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, they claimed that that's not the city's property. That's not their property. It's the city's property. So that's not right. I don't know what the legal implications are for that. But LA City Planning told me to speak with the city attorney's office to verify this. And I did, and they haven't responded back. So if the city attorney's office would please answer my emails, because the city. Next speaker, please begin your one minute. Speaker, you're unmuted. Please begin. Go to the next speaker, please. Next speaker, please begin your one minute. Speaker with the last. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. General public comment. Even subhuman low life. Nuri Martinez said, if you are indicted, you will be suspended from this council. Petty pink face, corrupt Armenian dictator Paul Ku Klux Gakorian is even lower than Martinez because he has indicted out on bail and beveling criminal current price voting daily on this corrupt sleazy council. Sleazy Marquise Dawson is once again teaming up with developers to harass and evict the low income black senior citizens at the West Angeles Villas complex. These are more black people impacted by incompetent and corrupt Dawson's food desert and CDA. Sleazy Marquise Dawson is the worst thing to ever happen to the black community. The black community has zero representation from this incompetent, corrupt, sellout, self-serving, indicted black member of this corrupt city council. Thank you. Next speaker, please begin your one minute. Speaker with the last four digits, 9519, please press star six to mute yourself. Speaker, you're now unmuted. Please begin. Yes, my name is Jason. I'm a smoke scan viewer. Speaker, your time is running. Oh, my bad. I didn't really say anything yet. Yes, um, I'd like to say what's up, my man, Damon, on smoke scan. You're having a good show again today, as usual. He's getting out of the park. My boy Stinks over there. Call him a little trouble there. A little easy on my boy Damon there. You know, Stinks, he's just doing the thing. He needs me a little love. But um, the meeting today was okay, I guess. It's kind of fucked up, you know. I, I guess our city attorney, you know, I know we talk about getting a new one there because, you know, she's kind of hard to hear and whatever. Maybe she need to do a little cute kiss in there and get it cleaned out there. But, you know, we're going to have our show going on. We smoke this can. Hopefully we have a good uh, a good, um, a good good um, night, uh, maybe down on Figure Road. We can see a little lady, you know, doing the usual there, you know, making little exchange there, trying to get some loving in the world going on. But um, y'all have a good weekend. Okay, thank you, Mr. Boomhauer. Next. Next speaker, please begin. Yeah, hi, Daniel Gust at Substack.com. Once again, you guys lowered my hand in the meeting. If you don't want to give me the time now, this is a Gary has a history of doing this. I'll be glad to file a formal cure and correct, and you'll have to undo all of your votes or I'll file a claim against the city. So if you want to do that, let me know. And if not, I'll file a, 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 a formal cure and correct if you'd like. Um, and I, I, I guess I'm not being given more time than this. So let's get to the point about this homeless count last night on the news, the vendor urban alchemy that you've paid tens of millions of dollars for was shown hosing down homeless people on a sidewalk in the middle of the frigid air. And you lose more people due to hypothermia here than in most other major cities. So does that person count as a homeless in the homeless count? Miss Raman, where are you? Does the tens of millions of dollars you're paying to Urban Alchemy include homeless people that they douse with water? Next speaker, please begin. Uh, Damon, can you hear me? 
continue to get well, buddy. To those of you that are turning a blind eye to Scientology, uh, weaponizing the LAPD, human trafficking, and covering up for rapists, remember, if you dance with the devil, the devil don't change. The devil changes you. I know some of you are too far gone. I hope some of you still care enough about your community to get involved and support the removal of their tax-exempt status. Shout out to First Responders Media, who's covering what's going on in the southern border in Arizona. Uh, KDL's Tia, I don't know how you feel about a law enforcement type guy. But what's up, girl? How do you feel about a raid on your southern border? Shout out to A.A. Ron, Growing Up Scientology, William Goot, and Chris Without a Hellcat. Xenu's got nothing on stinks. Jason, a smoking scam viewer, I'm sorry to hear about your issue shooting ropes. Eat more celery, brother. You'll be shooting ropes like a pro. And Dalton, I thought you'd be bigger. Next speaker, please begin. Rob Kwan, why was this city attorney put in a quiet timeout from council meetings for five years? Because that clown embarrassed Herb and Nuri. Story time, two thirds of you weren't on the council five years ago. And I don't think any of you were on the floor when it went down, but we had four to five members on the floor at most. A bunch of our members were off taking pictures, hosting press conferences, dining out on lunch on the South Lawn. To make matters worse, they proceeded to a special meeting called the roll and the city clerk said everyone was there. I used my public comment to say they could not vote on the item because they did not have a quorum. This city attorney ruled me off topic repeatedly. When I objected, they kicked me out of the meeting and stopped proceeding so the officers could remove me. Wiser voices prevailed. And then they sat there for 15 minutes as Nuri and Alexis angrily texted and called members to get to the floor. Emily Albert Reyes was live tweeting the shit show. Ultimately, I was given my time to speak on your lack of quorum. This episode was mentioned in the article on Herb stepping down as council president. If you just let me speak, nothing would happen. And instead, you embarrassed yourself and our elected. Next speaker, please begin. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me all? Go ahead. We can hear you. Your time's running. Go ahead. Okay, start my clock over. Hi, good afternoon, uh, City Council. Since we're funding LAPD, the problem that I have with LAPD is that they do not have a special unit uh, for elder abuse cases. My father lives in Hugo Sordo Martinez's district. Unfortunately, my father is a victim of elder abuse by his live-in girlfriend. She completely blocked me and my family from having contact with my father. And we discovered a uh, new evidence that she and her daughter are abusing my father. My father is 75 years old. I've tried everything and I'd like to see if you guys can tell LAPD to please create an elder abuse uh, unit. Especially the fact that you guys have other units for other type of cases. LAP does not have the oh, strike. elder abuse unit uh, in their department. Please help me. Okay, that, that concludes uh, public comment. So let's now move to what is left on the desk. Council has motions for posting and referral. They are posted and referred. The desk is clear. The desk is clear. Colleagues, are there any announcements? Seeing no announcements, uh, we'll move our colleagues. Does anyone wish to adjourn this meeting in memory? Yes. If I could ask everybody to rise. And we will adjourn. Mr. McCosker, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. President and members. Colleagues, I ask that we adjourn today's meeting in memory of Police Officer 2, Austin Cronkright. Austin was appointed uh, to the department on September 3rd, 2019, and was last assigned to the harbor area, to our harbor division. He went to Redondo Union High School in the Bay Area. After high school, he attended El Camino, uh, where he honed his mechanics skills. He loved restoring and selling old cars. His love of cars led him, before LAPD, to Motor Trend Magazine, where he lived a dream of being around fancy cars as a video production assistant. He was then accepted 
into the LAPD Academy. His hard work and his sweat paid off, and he became an officer, just like his grandfather, his great uncle, and an uncle before him. He loved his job, and he loved his city family. Officer Cronkright is survived by his mother, Jackie, father, Mark, brother, Zach, sister, Courtney, brother-in-law, John, niece, Marisa, and nephew, Jake. They, of course, will continue to honor his legacy, cherish his mem memory. He had a city family, too. And I'm joined uh, by Captain Brent McGuire of our Harbor Division. Uh, the captain kept us posted along Austin's journey about his health, us being the community in true community policing, and gave us opportunities to go along with the city family as uh, Austin was sick and sadly passed away. But more importantly, I'm joined, we are all joined by Officer Monica Krolnick and Officer Zachary Adler. Monica and Zachary were in a group of about 10 officers at the Harbor Division that hung out together with Austin. And Austin was just, this group was tight. And they're helping each other get through the, they're all P2s basically, or younger officers, right? coming up in the LAPD, coming up in these times. And Austin was a real leader. He would enter the room and he would light up the room. And he was funny and he was charming and he was handsome, of course, and he was athletic and he was outdoorsy and he was a real partner. Um, and the officers, especially that tight-knit group of, of 10 officers that hung out together are gonna miss him. But everybody at the Harbor Division is gonna miss him. Everyone in the Harbor is gonna miss him. And so, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to first welcome officers who knew him and loved him to the council floor and to be with them as they grieve the loss but remember his memory. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Uh, Mr. DeLeon. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, I rise before you today with a very heavy heart. As we come together to adjourn this city council meeting in memory of a remarkable individual, that being Melvin Turnstall. Melvin, a proud resident of CD14, touched the many lives uh, here in our community. Born on the East Coast in Philadelphia on December 10th, 1960, he brought with him a spirit that resonated far and wide. Melvin's passions were diverse for his, from his love for the Philadelphia Eagles and, if you will, the New York, the New England Patriots to his admiration for the King of Pop, Michael Jackson. Inspired by his idol, Melvin actually made a, became a talented songwriter and a guitar player. In a testament to his devotion at the age of 22, Melvin embarked on a unique journey, a remarkable journey, hitchhiking all the way from Philadelphia to Indiana just to see the home where Michael Jackson grew up. In 1988, Melvin found his way to Los Angeles, adding his unique essence to our vibrant city. Fate led me personally to meet Melvin on December 10th, 2020, uh, during the height of the global COVID pandemic. Uh, for that was my birthday, as it turns out, and his birthday as well. Uh, walking on the streets of Skid Row is where we met. It was a serendipitous connection that bonded us in celebration. When I met Melvin, he was facing tremendous adversity, residing in a tent down on T Town Avenue in the heart of Skid Row. Uh, despite his circumstances, he remained a kind, very kind, and compassionate soul, always expanding a helping hand to others. I remember during one of the spells when we had a deluge of rain and everyone was being soaked to the bone in Skid Row, the first trench coat I ever bought in my entire life when I went to Washington, D.C. must have been maybe perhaps 10 below zero or at least 10 degrees above that, but I never owned a trench coat in my entire life. I went to Georgetown to buy a trench coat before I went up to the hill, and the trench coat was a little big on me, and um, I never knew what size to buy, and that trench coat, I went to my house, nice one with the liner inside, brought it to Melvin, 
and Melvin wore that green trench coat for quite a while. And it turns out Melvin also, you know, gave that trench coat as a gift to another individual who was less fortunate than him on Skid Row. Overcoming, overcoming many, many hardships, Melvin moved from that tent to Bridge Housing, uh, just right down the street, uh, to the LA Grand, uh, to his final destination, which is the Care First Village, uh, just not too far from us. The Care Village that uh, my office collaborated with County Board Supervisor Ilda Solis in creating the Ilda Solis Care First Village. There he spent the last couple of his years before his passing. In the final chapters of his life, Melvin made a lasting impact. He advocated for rent control and conducted tours of Skid Row for housing justice leaders, showcasing his commitment to a cause greater than himself. A dedicated volunteer at the Fred Jordan Mission and a fervent believer that housing is a human right, Melvin leaves behind a legacy that inspires us all. Melvin is survived by his sister, Valerie, his brother, Chandler, his uncle, Calomo, and his daughter. His warmth, generosity, and love were felt by all who knew him. Also, it is testament to many of Melvin's friends and those who worked with him very closely who are here today. With us today are his friends, Susie Shannon, Cristian Castaneda, Chantel Nash, who Chantel was his caseworker, specifically at the Ilo Solis First Care Village, uh, Mary uh, Shalini, uh, Bar uh, Betty Toto, Mickey Jackson, uh, Susie uh, uh, Sung Anderson, as well as Sheila Rossi. Uh, many of them worked with him, represented him, were his case workers, and he had such a huge impact on them. I know he had an impact on me. He was a, 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 just a beautiful man, uh, inside and out. Just an absolutely beautiful man. Um, let us carry forward Melvin's spirit of resilience, compassion, which we all lack in today's day and age, and advocacy. Many may his memory be a guiding light as we continue our collective journey toward a better city, a better life, a better society for all individuals, regardless of who you are and where you come from. May our good friend, our very good friend, Melvin Turnstall, rest in peace as well as power. Thank you. Okay. Colleagues, are there any additional adjourning motions? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Go forth. Thank mm -hmm. you.